as we saw a week ago, installing Node.js on the Macintosh is just like installing it on the Windows system. No big deal, download it, install it, it's ready to go. The problem we ran into is when we tried to install Mongo, it did not install correctly. Well, there's an entire whole process that you need to go through to get Mongo to install correctly. I finally found a good reference on the MongoDB website explaining what that full process is. However, that full process does not include all the steps that you're going to have to do. So I'm going to talk about those steps very quickly for those that are on a Mac, and you'll have that as a reference and we'll be able to go forward. So the link is there. Um, it's it's well done, other than it, it doesn't, well, I'm, I, I said it doesn't have everything that's there. It does have everything there. It's just hidden, <laughs> if that makes sense. But if you've been in technology and done any kind of research or, or tried to install other things and get things to work, there's always something that it seems hidden because it's not exactly the same on your computer as what the instructions said. And, and that's what I think we run into. So we've got this great document on the MongoDB website. Go over it, read the inter overview, things like that, and jump down to the install MongoDB community section edition. Uh, it talks about the prerequisites. It requires that Xcode be up to date and have its ex all the extra things installed. So if you have not installed Xcode or you have not launched Xcode lately, like since the last update on your computer, then Xcode's not up to date and you're gonna have problems. So that was the first thing I had to do was launch Xcode. Soon as I launched Xcode, it said, hey, we need to install some extra stuff. So I let it do that three or four minutes later, it was happy, it had everything downloaded, and Xcode was ready to go, and I didn't have to do anything else with Xcode. Yes? Just for clarification, Xcode is only a requirement for working on Mac, right? Only on Macintosh. Okay. Xcode is the tool for Mac. It's our Visual Studio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to publish for Mac, you're gonna use Xcode, or mm -hmm. iPhone, or iPad, or any of those. That is the publishing tool for, for everything. Yes, you gotta have Xcode. If you've got a Mac, you've got to have Xcode and it's got to be up to date. Xcode is free. So if you don't yes. have it on your Mac, go to the App Store. And download it, get it installed. It's huge and you got to run it. Yeah. Because after you install it, it not everything is installed. You got to run it the first time so it finishes the install. Once you run it the first time, it's good to go. It'll have everything on there and you can go to the next thing. The next thing is you have to install a program called Homebrew. Homebrew is a tool, it's a package management system for Macintoshes. It basically goes through and makes sure that you have all of the resources that you need to be able to install something correctly. So it dramatically makes this whole process a lot easier, except, and it's a, big except you've got to install one thing. So I did this command that the first one it gives you after installing homebrew, follow the instructions, easy to do, no big deal. I did the, then did this brew tap mongo db forward slash brew. Let me bring up my terminal window. And I did that command right here. Let me make that a little bigger. Okay, so yeah, the first time I tried to do this, it gives me all these errors, right? That was after you installed it. That, this is before I did it correctly. Yeah. So if you start yeah. seeing a bunch of errors, back, back up. Make sure Xcode's ready to go. Make sure Homebrew's installed, all those types of things. So I started following the directions very, very closely because you start getting error codes and suddenly you start reading all the directions instead of doing the typical thing where I don't need an instruction manual, get out of here. I know, just show me a picture, I'm good. I typed in exactly what it said, brew tap mongodb forward slash brew. And it gives me an arrow, an arrow, no, an error. 
it doesn't i took an arrow to the knee and no uh it gave me an error uh saying that the home brew core is a shallow clone and that i needed to do a brew update you know what once you start getting errors you need to start looking at oh, yeah. what it's saying so you're supposed to execute these two commands get dash c forward slash user local homebrew library taps homebrew homebrew core fetch unshallow and then another one as well for the homebrew cask so they have to be run they pull from github and they're actually very large installs so i jumped down after it gave me all these instructions and did the first one it took about five minutes and we've got fast internet. So you're pulling down the repository. I'm pulling down the entire repository of the homebrew core so that it's not a shallow install. In other words, run these two commands, the gets the two git commands, mm -hmm. so that you don't have a shallow install of homebrew on your computer. Right on. Okay. Will your path be exactly the same as ours? Yes, okay. because it's the user path, user local. Okay, just want to check. It's not going to your anything. Uh, so uh, the first one downloaded like 240 megabytes. Uh, the second one did 111 megabytes. Mm -hmm. Each one took three or four minutes. It, I'm still installing it. After the it period. does take a little bit of time. So expect about 10 minutes to get all that done. As, and at the time, I did not have my laptop plugged in, and I was watching the battery life go down, and it was a little scary. Once you've got that done, then redo the command, brew tap mongodb forward slash brew. Then it does this whole auto update and installs mongodb. Who would have thought? It's... <laughs> it does everything it and that's what all of this is that it's installing and getting ready to go so that mongo will work correctly on your system still installing lots of stuff going on here again this took a few minutes actually the screen just zipped right past as i was running this there okay then I wanted I went back to the instructions because I had learned my lesson and did the next one. I made sure that brew was installed. If brew is installed, then it's going to come back and say MongoDB brew if, if you do a grep. So the next thing I did is I installed the community edition, which is brew install MongoDB community version 4.4, which is what the correct version is. It went through, installed that very quickly, and then gives you the instructions on how to launch MongoDB community on your system. There's two methods you can install it. One is it runs in the background all the time as a server. Now, if you're doing a lot of Mongo development, that's great. When you boot up, the server's running. If you're not doing a lot of Mongo development, that's an extra process running in the background. And it, but yeah, it's going to, it's using your system more. It, so I tend to go more with the ma manual launch, which is, hold on, let me get this out of this window out of the way. It, it does have a, a manual launch that will run in the, and you can, when you hit control C, it ends, which is the MongoDB double dash dash config user local, et cetera, MongoDB, MongoD.config. Hit that. Mongo is now running on my system. It was a lot easier on the PC. Yes. Now, the nice thing is, just like other windows on your computer system, since I'm launching this on my local system, I don't have to, I, I'm just going to leave this terminal window open so that that process that the MongoDB server or the MongoD server is running in the background. 
Okay, so I can I can now minimize that, but don't close it because we want that to continue running. So I need a new shell, and then so it's just a new terminal window. Yes, new terminal window, and this is the exact same as on your PC. So if you are on a PC, you can launch PowerShell. Does everybody have PowerShell up? Because we're going to launch our server. Everybody should now be at the same place. For PC, is there anything else we need to do? There should not be anything. I just want you to, to have your terminal window or your PowerShell open right now. So we, we just start right now. Right. Everybody is now at the same point. Okay. Now, whether you're on Windows or PC, I told you last time to put the Calisius on your desktop. Everybody got Calisius on your desktop. I'm seeing nods, so I'm going to assume that everybody's at the same place. So I need to, yes, I know this is should be basic, but I want to make sure everybody's at the same place. How do I get to the folder where Calisius is? CD, CD for change directory. So I want to go to for my on mine, as long as you don't have it installed someplace else. I'm going to go to my desktop and then I can do a directory in Windows, DIR, or on Mac or Linux, LS, and it'll show all the files that are on my desktop, including my folders. One of those is Calisius. So I'm going to CD Calisius. And again, I changed the name to Calisius instead of it being Calisius Unity 3D master because I'm lazy and I'm gonna to have to do this several times. And I've never met a programmer that's not lazy. It's amazing the amount of work we as programmers will do to get out, yes, to, to avoid CD desktop. It, by default, it's going to go to your user folder. It should open in your user and then CD desktop. So I'm in Calisius. Did you have a question? So I did it again after the grip. Okay. And it's just, I think it's doing something. Uh, that happened. could be. So just follow along and we'll yeah. we'll make sure that it gets. Okay. Because it's not throwing anything else out. Because all we're going to do is launch the server here. Yeah, I know. There's and then. No error. It's not giving me an error. It's just that, a blank line. So uh, oh, then, then, then it's running. Okay. A blank line on the Mongo D. If you had to manually launch the Mongo D. Yeah on your desktop on a Mac, blank line a blank line means it is running. That's what mine is. Great. Okay. Just so okay. if I pull mine up here, you yeah. can see here at the bottom, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. blank line. Okay. That, that means that the process is running. Great. And we're actually gonna get that same thing here in just a minute. So I'm gonna go to the server folder. Now remember, last time, the first thing that we had to do after we got to the server folder was type npm which npm is node package manager yes node package manager or management whatever and we had to tell it to install now if you've already installed you don't have to do it again if you haven't installed you need to do that i'm not sure i've done it on this one i think you did it was that the thing that said like where it's sitting where it did that <laughs> okay, it found three packages that, that needed funding. <laughs> yes, we did do that last time. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to hurt anything. I just did it again, and. I'm sorry. Like if you install it again, would you like this update? Yeah, it, it just did. It ought, it checked my 449 packages yeah, to make that. sure that everything's there. And it also checked to see if any of them needed updating. Okay. So apparently in the last week, none of those packages have changed, which that's nice. We've done our, we're in the right folder. We've done our install. The next thing we need to do is launch our server. Right. To do that, NPM, Server. Oh, no, 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 not server. Start. <laughs> NPM start. And if everything goes correct, now there's one of the folder, one of the Calisius files is being depreciated. And that's what this warning is that pops up here. 
Just a depreciation warning. It's not a big deal. We can ignore that. Why is it being if it was red, we would not ignore that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, warnings we're not going to worry about. Yeah. But it is running. Yes, it is. On localhost oh, yeah, two five six seven. Okay. Okay. We're we're good to go then. Okay. Yes. If you got an error, it may be because you're not in the server folder. Our Calicius server running on Node.js is now running. If you wanted to exit, control C. We're, I can close this now or minimize, don't close it, minimize it. Yes. So just for future reference. For future reference. If I want to run this server, I also need to do the MongoDB config, whatever thing to run Mongo. If you are on a Macintosh on computer right. and you did not set it up to automatically launch every single time, then yes, you're going to have to launch MongoDB Mongo first, first before this will work. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. Yes. It may not be important, but I'm curious as to what depreciation is. It, it's it's there. The Calicius is an active development, and the people that are developing it are planning on changing the the that particular set of tools. Okay. So the, in the next version, they're not planning on using that. But right now, if we look at the index.ts file, which which you'll notice here. That's what's being run. Mm -hmm. It just like a web server. Okay, you may not know this. If you launch a web server, Apache, Node.js, Nginx, whatever, what's the file that it's first going to look for? What's your home page called? And if you're a web developer, you would be able to tell me right immediately. Well, that's what Microsoft tried to do, but no, it is called index dot and then index dot HTM, index dot HTML, index dot JS or index dot TS. It's looking for a file called index. Index is your home page for any website, any folder that contains a website. Yes. So you're saying like the index.ts is within the server folder? Is that like the home That page? is always your home page. If you make a website, there will be a file called index. Is that like index.home? Like it's like index. It is index dot usually Usually, it's if it's a web, standard web page, HTML or HTML. If it's a JavaScript, uh, index.js. And if it's TypeScript, index.ts. If it's PHP, it's index.php. But index is always the page for your home. 